Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. Today's tip and trick video is going to uh, be a demonstration of how I painted a waterfall. And uh, this was from a sus subscriber who had asked about painting a waterfall in watercolor. And I have some other videos on my channel that are, uh, that go over painting a waterfall. And so this is just one version. This is a waterfall that I took a picture of in uh, the Colorado mountains and I uh, used a camera setting that caused the action of the waterfall or the movement of the waterfall to uh, stop, basically. So you get hard edges in a lot of places and uh, the things that might normally be blurry because they're moving, uh, they are hard edged. So one of the first things I did for this painting was I uh, did a detailed drawing and then I masked the areas that I wanted to remain white. So in the water, there are some places where I've got little bubbles and the frothy part of the water, and I masked those uh, areas to keep them white. And then I started the water by finding the blue areas. And by the way, my uh, finished painting is in the upper right image. And so you can see those blue areas that are in the water and they are reflecting the sky. So I painted those on first and on the demonstration here, they're actually a little pale. I did go back later and add some more color to those, but it gave me a place to start. And so I put a light wash of a pale blue on there and then I started painting the greens and the yellows and the kind of rusty oranges that are in the water. And uh, the two le upper right uh, shapes that I painted first in those greens, uh, those were on dry paper. And then the upper left was on wet paper. And by painting water on that area first, that gave me more time to get around that large area and uh, be able to not end up with uh, random hard edges and brush strokes and things. So having the water there uh, is basically a vehicle in that instance to get through that area. And it also gives uh, soft edges to any of the changes of color or shapes that I have in that area. And I am pulling out more color right in here. I am, was using ultramarine blue and new gamboge as my main green in the water. And sometimes it was bluer and sometimes it was yellower. And then there are places where I use my warm red, which is Parole Scarlet, to uh, give some kind of rusty brown uh, or orangey feel to the water in some places. So that might be rocks that are under the water causing that color or um, things reflecting onto the surface, either the rocks around that area or something else in the area that could be giving it uh, some of that color. And right now I'm painting on uh, dry paper and I'm just slowly working around those lighter shapes and changing my color here and there just so that there's some variety. And I do end up with hard edges painting this way. So if I uh, wanted to later, I could come back with a little water on my brush and just soften some of those edges if I felt like they needed it. So I'm just working down the shape and I'm continuing to uh, keep that front edge wet um, with the uh, paint that I'm using so that I can continue to kind of join everything as I'm moving around that shape. And the uh, big white areas that are in the water, those are the rocks. And I could have started... Uh, after painting some of the light areas in the water, I could have gone back up to the rocks and started painting some of those things on. So it really kind of depends on how you like to work and, and what makes sense to you. But it helped for me to start getting this big shape of the water in so that uh, I could tell how light or dark I wanted to make those rocks. 
And one of the things to remember about painting water is that in order to give it form or movement, like it's rolling over rocks or it's uh, deep water and it's kind of moving up and down um, is to follow the direction that the water is flowing when you're painting on those shapes. So as I'm painting, I'm basically like that area right there, there's a rock in the water. And so I curved the water over that rock. And this is a sped up demo. So I'm not including the whole painting. You can see a whole batch of that water in the middle went in. And um, now I'm going to start adding some color on the rocks. And I've placed uh, the lighter color on there. And I'm sure that was dry. And then I came back with some darker color for the side that's in shadow. And I'm using ultramarine blue, I think that's burnt sienna and some quin magenta to make that dark uh, purpley color. And sometimes it leans a little bluer, sometimes it goes a little brown. I took it off my board there to tip the color just a little bit. And then I'm using a small toothbrush with some water on it to uh, spritz some water on that slightly damp paint so that it will cause little miniature blooms and give some texture to the rock. And then on this rock, uh, I think I pulled out maybe Quinn Gold and I made a muted yellowy green because there was a little bit of the look of maybe some moss on the rock and uh, kind of a grayish feel to it. And then I'm using my darker mix again for the shadows. And you can see there's um, a difference in color on some of the rocks from my original or from my actual painting. And so some of that happened in later layers. And, uh, and then I think the colors are just slightly different in the video compared to my actual finished painting. And here I'm going back on this rock and adding some more color to the rock. And it's always uh, for me uh, doing layers and going back and adjusting if I need to. So I tend to paint a little lighter at first and then increase the value if I need to. And I did go back into the water in places and added uh, some of the marks that give uh, the look of flow to the water. So there are some darker green um, areas and maybe darker blue in parts of the water that uh, are uh, that come later that go on top of the layers that are there right now. And then I'm coming in here and painting around some of the mask that I have down in that area and over it as well and putting in the darker uh, side of the rock that's in the water right there and still using that earlier mix of the ultramarine and burnt sienna and quin magenta to make sort of a muted purpley brown. And then I decided to take it off my board. Normally my board is tipped about an inch and a half to two inches and uh, paint on that dark without my board tipped because I wanted to keep that darker color in that area and not have it uh, with the gravity of being tipped, uh, slowly move down that shape. And so taking the board off of my uh, riser can help with that feeling. And whenever, whenever I am uh, making a shape, I, especially in water where there's frothy edges and things, I'm looking at the bottom of the edge and the top of uh, that shape to make sure that it's not too straight and it's got some variety to it. And then uh, just cleaning up some edges there. And then I put it back on my riser. And um, I think it, I'm just adjusting where there was some pooling paint. And then I did spritz it with the water again, like I did earlier to get some little blooms happening. And it really can depend on how wet or dry that area is, how much of a bloom, little miniature bloom you might get. For this big rock over here, I wet the rock first and then I'm using some uh, kind of warmer color at the top, Quin Gold and maybe some uh, Burnt Sienna mix up there. And I think I may have gone back later and added a little more color uh, because it, it looks a little bright in the uh, video compared to my image. And then as I come down the side, 
I went ahead and uh, darkened up my color and started the shadow side of the rock. And this will get more color later. So it was just that first layer. And I was looking not at the shadows that were on the rock on the top, a little bit on the side, but I know it was going to go darker. And so I just went ahead and um, darkened it. And then I used a little uh, color on my brush and splattered some paint. And that's what the tapping of one brush over the other was. And I'm going to this back rock. And I also used the flicking of the water on that big rock on the left in order to get those little blooms. So I look for um, different ways to create texture on the rocks and some of those techniques uh, work pretty well. And so this rock has uh, some kind of greenish gray areas on it as well and some warmer areas. So I'm just getting some of that in. And if you're not seeing me dry my, my uh, image, I am doing that in between working on areas because I want to make sure that uh, the shapes are dry before I add like this, the shadow in here, I dried my paper prior to that to make sure that it was going to give me the harder edges that I wanted. And in order to make the water uh, feel lighter, I needed some of those darker shapes around the rocks to make the water um, not be too dark. And you can have a variety of color in water. So if you are looking at your image, you might have reflections in the water from the sky. You might have something around the waterfall or the water that is uh, creating some color uh, reflections. It could be from the rocks. It could also be from the movement of the water and the kind of soil in that area. So sometimes you'll see water that looks very red and uh, or rusty red, and that's because of the soil in that area. And if it's a moving river, you can get the soil churned up and you'll get more of that color in the water. So whatever might be the local color. And then also the greens and things might be from trees in the area reflecting in the water, or it could be um, if it's a pond or something with algae in it, you might ha might have some of that color in there. So don't assume that just because it's a waterfall that it's going to be blue. So then I'm going back to this area and on the rock and I wanted to put some darker value for the shadow side and then across the top of the rock. And I have not done anything with the uh, areas in the water that are masked and other than I may have removed a little bit of mask on a few of them, but I will need to go back and soften some edges here and there so that uh, they won't look so cut out, uh, especially if you're using mask, it can look really uh, kind of foreign or odd and not a part of the painting. And then down at the bottom of these uh, rock areas, I will need to uh, shadow and put in some value in a few places so that it doesn't look too white. It needs to have some, some color in there and it will still read as the white area in the water. And say I'm going back and using a little bit of water flicked on the rock again to get some more of those little blooms happening. And then down in the water uh, below the rock, I'm using a various, various mixes of a purple or a purple gray um, and or a little bit of kind of muted greens in places so that uh, it does feel like it's in shadow, but I still get the look of maybe some bubbles and things happening. And some of those areas may still have some mask on them. So those uh, little uh, flecks of white here and there that I saved with the masking fluid, I will uh, remove the mask later. And then some of that I will actually put some color on top of and some I will leave white. And so you can see there, I'm, I'm going back over to that area to put a little more shadow under around the rock. 
I will be placing, I think it's about five of my waterfall paintings at the end of this video. And I'll just mention a few things and uh, show them so that you can see the variety. And up in this area, I am going back and softening some edges. And then I think later on, I did some more to that area. So it wasn't quite the way I wanted it. Now I'm going to uh, come back into that area on the right and I will be pulling color, uh, lifting color using a, a, a flat brush with some water on it so that it has some rougher edges and it looked a little bit like um, it was too straight and uh, it needed a little bit of some vari variety up in that area. So I uh, pulled out my flat brush to, to do some lifting and I liked that better. And then I'm using my spray bottle on the dry paint on both of those areas. And then I count to about 30 seconds and press really hard and twist my paper towel on those wet areas. And that can also uh, lift color and give you some texture on your rocks. And that is one of the techniques that I show in some of my technique videos. I will also be linking uh, the other waterfall videos that I have done that are on my channel at the um, bottom in the description. So you can look at those if you'd like as well. There's one that I did that was a um, soft focus waterfall and I do show the painting for that at the end of this video. And here I'm removing the masking fluid and any of the white areas in the water now will sparkle and I need that white to be able to tell me if I need to go darker with any of the color around it. So once I get to a certain point and I feel like it's pretty good that I can make changes if I need to, then I go ahead and remove the mask. Then comes the time where I have to use a flat brush and just slowly go around and adjust the edges of the masked areas. So I use some water and I soften edges and I clean them up and then sometimes I will come back in with paint. And here are my paintings. So this is the one I just completed. I hope you enjoyed and please let me know if you have a tip trick or technique that you would like to see in watercolor. And I will add that to my list and I will see you next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.